the next big break to, to talk about is obviously 1980. Um, you were literally parachuted into one of the most famous metal bands of all time, Black Sabbath, um, mid-tour yeah. when Bill Ward decided to leave. I mean, talk me through that. How did you get that gig? How did you get the call? Well, even before that, uh, right before Sabbath, I got a call from Sharon Osbourne, okay. and they were putting Ozzy's band together. You know, she was trying to get him straightened out and he's in England and, and make the first record. And so they called me and said, Hey, uh, do you, you know, it's a Sharon, uh, we're putting a band together. We'll fly you to England, hang out with Ozzy, see how it goes. Oh, whoa. I back. I mean, I was 20 years old. I never been out of the country except for Canada. And, um, uh, so I asked Carmine, my brother, I said, is Ozzy crazy? I mean, should I do this? And go all the way over there. He goes, yeah, he's pretty crazy. So I turned it down. Oh. I just told her I, I couldn't do it. And then about uh, a month later, Sabbath calls. And they're in California. They're in Los Angeles. That's where I live. And they said, uh, Bill Ward um, is missing in action. And we need to finish the tour. You want to, you're interested? You can come down and meet Tony Iommi tonight. I said, sure. Because it was easy. I'm, they're right, you know, down the street, actually. So I went and met Tony, and we hit it off really well. He heard an album that I did uh, with my band called Axis, really good, good band, and he liked it. And uh, he invited me down to rehearsal. So the next day, packed my drums in my '67 Mustang, and uh, went down to rehearsal and played. And met Ronnie and and uh, met Geezer, Jeff Nichols on keyboards, and we hit it off. It was really good. You know, and the first song we played was Neon Nights, which I heard on the radio. I didn't know it very well, but I knew it kept going and there was only one stop in the middle. So that was easy to figure out faking it. <laughs> and uh, that's the first song I played with Ronnie James Dio. And then 40 years later, that was the last song I played with Ronnie. Oh, really? It was at uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey with Heaven and Hell. And that was the last song we played together. So that was freaky. So then I'm in the, I'm in the band and uh, they said, okay, I was in the band until Bill Ward came back. Okay. Yeah. That's what happened. So we played a, a little bit and then they were so happy. They found a drummer. They went to the pub and I'm like, I got a 14 songs to, to learn. I don't, I wasn't a big Sabbath fan, so I didn't know these songs that well. Uh, so I stayed back, worked with Jeff Nichols, keyboard player, and we worked on the songs and each day they went to the pub. Luckily they went less and less and, you know, I had to keep working on the song. We only have four days. Then the last day, everybody was nervous. Oh shit. You know, <laughs> we only got a couple hours of rehearsal left. First gig was Hawaii, Aloha stadium, 30, 40,000 people. And now they got a new drummer who they never played with another drummer before at that point. So they were nervous, but we got through it. You know, we got through it. The endings were a bit sloppy and long, but, uh, as the tour went on, it got tighter and tighter. And then, uh, eventually we had to do a song for the movie, heavy metal. Warner brothers records wanted us to do a song. So we're on the, heaven and hell album tour 1980 so we went into that two days off so we went into john lennon's house he's already been he's passed already and ringo owned it of all places and i got his room which is weird they gave me the key i go to the door it's a john Len john and yoko i didn't go in because he just passed away and i'm i thought it was weird you know stay in the room i should have went in the room i wish i did so uh, that's where we wrote and recorded the Mob Rules song, the Mob Rules. That was the first version of it. And that came out so good. Everybody was happy and crazy. Record company loved it. So that kind of cemented me into, I'm in the band, you know. And uh, Bill Ward doesn't look like he's coming back. So, and then I continued from there. Incredible. Some incredible sliding doors moments there. If you said yes to Ozzy, then... You might not have met up with, with Ronnie and, and everything that followed with that as well afterwards. So, yeah, crazy. Holy Diver might have been 
Holy smokes. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Uh, speaking of mob rules, I mean, um, what was the process behind that then? Obviously, you were part of the band at this point. Um, Tony and Giza, obviously original members. How much say did, did Ronnie and yourself have in the songwriting process at this point? Oh, well, Ronnie had a lot of say in it. You know, he had a lot of, he always had a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's writing the lyrics. Geezer's not writing the lyrics now. So he had a lot of say. They all did, you know. And I didn't really say much. I was all ears, you know. I mean, you know, these guys, I'm the new kid on the block. What am I going to uh, say? Whatever ideas. But I might have said something here and there, but I, I was cool. And uh, but the songwriting process was really good. I mean, we wrote that song in one day, one day and started recording it and finished it the next day. That's pretty amazing for that. Uh, that band. Absolutely. And then after the album, there was the recording of the live evil. Um, and then tensions began to, to, to creep in, didn't they, between various members and various accusations about um, Ronnie and, and maybe yourself altering the, the live mix and all that sort of weird stuff that went on. I mean, what were your memories around that time when it got messy? Um, well, it got messy while we were re recording the live evil stuff uh, on the road. You know, it became... We had two limos, uh, Tony and Geezer and Jeff and one, me and Ronnie, the other. Mm -hmm. you know, it became that kind of thing. They weren't getting along that good. I would jump in either limo. I was, I, I had no problem with anybody, obviously. Uh, I loved everybody. And uh, so that became apparent. And then uh, when we went to mix the album, we were supposed to be mixing in the afternoon, like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And Ronnie and I would show up because we lived close together. So we'd drive in together. Uh, I'd pick Ronnie up. He'd pick me up. Or I'd meet him at his house. And we were there. And, and Tony and Giza weren't there. So it, a couple of days of that, we wasted you know, a bunch of hours each day just sitting there. So Ronnie decided, well, you know, let's do, try to get some work done. You know? So we never, never put the vocal up and the drums up. I, I have no say in this. You know? I didn't along for the ride you know and then in the movie dio dreamers never die <laughs> they interviewed tony and geezer we don't even remember what happened that's <laughs> i was cracking up but well i don't know what happened but you know things were different back then so uh it's crazy yeah and obviously you must have had a great friendship with with ronnie so how um, difficult was it when, when he decided to, to leave and ask you to, to go with him to form Dio then? Because obviously it's, it sounds like a difficult thing to choose between Black Sabbath and the name and Geezer and Tony and, and then going off to something new with Ronnie. Well, it, it wasn't that hard to do because I'm, you know, I'm 22 years old. When you're young, you go, hey, yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that. And uh, it wasn't like, uh, oh, my God, what about my mortgage payment and this and that? It wasn't about that at all. So I just thought uh, we get along so well. This is one of the greatest singers in rock. And uh, he, we live at the same place. So it was kind of like, let's take a chance. This can't fail with Ronnie at the helm, you know, cannot fail. And so, you know, Tony and Giza wanted me to stay with them, but they were based in England. So it was kind of an easy decision to go, all right, let's try it, see what happens. And, uh, you know, it's, it seemed to work really, you know, really well, you know. So we got along and then uh, we got Jimmy Bain and Vivian Campbell uh, in the band. We went to England to, to listen to different guitar players and stuff. And then it was magic when we played together. We go, wow, this is, this is a good band now. Yeah. And you guys made some great albums together, but uh, there was a decision, wasn't there, in the early 90s for, for yourself and, and Ronnie to go back and join Black Sabbath. I mean, given what happened before, how did all that come about? And was there any trepidation about going back to, to the band? Um, well, Cozy was uh, in the project originally, Cozy Powell. Yeah. Uh, this was uh, the humanizer time. And um, Cozy fell off a horse and broke his pelvis. You know, and they he couldn't play, so they they were in the middle, not even the middle, of like beginning eight stages of doing a new record. So they're sitting there, and you know, well, what do we do? Who do we get? Let's call Vinny. They called me, 
And, uh, and it was taking a long time with Cozy. Ronnie didn't get on with Cozy. And it was spending a lot of money. And it was taking a long time. We did it in Wales. We rehearsed in Wales and uh, recorded there. Uh, so I flew over. And I'm easy to work with. Fast. And then we started cranking it, you know. Boom, boom, boom. Ronnie and I lived in the house together because we get along, you know. I don't, you know, Ronnie was in the house by himself, I think, before. So uh, we were able to, in a matter of a couple of weeks, finish the writing and reproduction and all this stuff. And um, so that became the, the Humanizer album. And then, uh, okay. Album's going to come out. Let's do a tour. So we did a, a tour at that point after, you know. But that's the time when grunge was coming out. So we were more like the old rock dinosaur, you know. Black Sabbath. We're playing smaller places and, you know. But it was a great album. Uh, people love that album now. 